Hey, it's Harcourt from Play. And today let's talk about variables in Interactions 2.0. So a variable is a value that can be set with user interaction. In Play, there's three types of variables. You have number variables, which are numbers. You have string variables, which can be a character, a phrase, or a word. And you have Boolean variables, which can be true or false. In this video, we'll walk you through how to create a variable, how to set a variable, and how to use a set variable. And we'll do this all through the creation of a sign up page. So first, we need to go to our variables panel to create a new variable or two new variables. If your variables panel is not open, you can go down to the bottom left corner and click on the two curly braces to set your variables panel as visible. Inside this panel, you'll see multiple lists. The top one says global, and this is where all of your global variables will live, which means that any variables here can be used across your entire project on any page. Next, you have the name of the page, in this case, variables sign up, and any variables created here are page variables that can only be used on the page they're created on. If you're working with a component, you might also have component variables that are only able to be used on the component they were created on and their instances, and you might have prefab variables, which are used in prefabs. We'll have other videos detailing all of that. So in this case, we're going to do a variable, a global variable, because we want to use this on both the variable signup page and variables confirmation page. So I'm going to create a new one. It's going to be a string. And in the name category, I'm going to type in user name. And you'll see that I made that one word. That's important. Variables need to have no spaces in them. My type is a string, as I already set, and I'm going to set my initial value to nothing. I can also add a description here if I wanted to say, the user's name from the text field. Great. Now just closing that automatically saves it. Now I'm also going to create another one, another string variable, and this one's going to be called user email. And again, it'll be a string, no value, and I'll just ignore the description for now. So now I've created these two variables. Next, let's work on setting those variables. So on my page right here, I have these two text fields. The top one is called name. So on here, I am going to add a text field event. And in this case, I'm going to do focus ended. So once I've typed my entire name in, then it's going to save the variable. On this focus ended trigger, I'm going to add a set variable action. Now let's check out this variable. On the left side, it says select variable. And this is where you're going to choose the already created variable that you want to set a variable, set a value to. So in this case, we'll do user name. Now I want the value of this variable to be whatever the user inputs in the text field. So I am going to open this expression editor. It's already set to string. And I'm going to type in name, which is, as you can see here, the name of the text field, dot value. And that's all I have to do. Now that's going to be setting that variable. Now I'm just going to copy this whole trigger here. And then I'm going to select this second text field. And on this one, I'll just paste it. The trigger can say the same. And for the action, I want to change this to the user email. And in this case, I want to use the email text field. And again, dot value to get the value of the second text field. So just to confirm, this first text field is going to save the user name variable. And the second text field is going to save the user email. And then when the user presses continue, it's going to take them into this variables confirmation page. Now on this page, you can see that there is a space where it says, thank you name, you'll receive an email at email. We want to fill in both of those text elements with the variables we just gathered. So I'm going to grab my full page here. And on my page, I'm going to add a page enter. So a page event that's on load. Now on this, I want to use a set text action. And we're going to do this to set the text of both name and email. Now, first, let's target that username. And for the text, typically I could type in a hard-coded value here. So I could say Harcourt, but that means every time the user comes to this page, it's going to set the name Harcourt, regardless of what the actual user input in. So I'm instead going to click on this plus sign on the left side to open the expression editor and create a custom expression. And in this case, I'm just going to put the value as that variable. So here we made it username. So now we're going to set the text at whatever that variable's current value is. Now I'm going to duplicate this. And in this case, I'm going to say 
I want the email text element to be the user email variable instead. So now that's all we have to do. Let's go back to that original sign up page and let's check it out on our iOS device. So I'm gonna type in my name and I'm gonna type in my email. And I just closed that. So I have now finished typing. So both my variables have been stored. Now I'm gonna press continue. And on the second page, you can now see that it saved the name Harcourt, which was that name variable. And it saved my email, which was the email variable. Now there's a lot of other things you can do with variables and we'll address those in other videos. For now, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks again for watching.